Good morning, everyone. It's such a privilege to welcome you all. David asked us to do this this morning. And I just know that you really are going to be blessed by this, this meeting. The writer to the Hebrews says that we should never neglect meeting together. And through the excellent leadership of our church, we have been able to meet regularly. I often wonder what the writer to the Hebrews would have thought about this meeting, where we all connected and yet so far apart. It's just absolutely amazing. I know that we will be blessed and we will meet with our God through the, through the worship, um, through the prayers, and especially through the message that Kent will bring us and God will meet with us. So let's open our meeting now with a prayer by Mike. Thank you. Father God, how, how comforting and, and what a joy it is to have you as our Father, our loving Father, full of mercy and grace. Lord, as we meet in this way that is still relatively unfamiliar to all of us, we, we, we keenly long to know you, in, know you and your presence in our worship. We, we long to know your eyes open and your ears attentive to our prayers. And we long to experience your word burrowing deep into our lives that, that we may go from here knowing that you have dealt bountifully with us, truly to live and to keep your word and to glorify you in our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. I'm over to Mark, and he's going to lead us in worship. Uh, and to do that, I have to make him the host, which I've just done. Mark, over to you. Morning, Hilton Baptist. Uh, Psalm 67, which I believe Kent will be preaching from later, looks forward to the day when all the nations will know the will of God and obey his will and will know his salvation. So the songs that I've, the two songs I've chosen today are songs that declare the hope that we have in Jesus. Uh, in, in God's salvation that he's worked out for us through Jesus. And, but it's not only the hope that we have, it is the hope for all the nations. So if you're new to this uh, format of service, I'm going to play some songs that I've recorded earlier. There will be words available so that you can sing along, but please make sure that your uh, microphones are muted while you sing. And bear with me while I sort all of this out.
make David back into the host. Now over to you, Sivian, for the children's talk. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I've got my mic on, yes. Um, thank you, that was wonderful, Mike. Um, 
It's good to see you all, uh, all the children on, on the Zoom here, sitting with their parents. That, that's really awesome. And then this past week, um, I started going to the church just to uh, do some planning about you know, how we can do our kids' program on Zoom or like some ways. But then my heart was really broken when I went into the church hall. And then because uh, now this, this, now we're on June, uh, we'll be preparing for the holiday club. Like I couldn't have my mind to see the children sitting on the floor, uh, running around, you know, and I was really, really heartbroken. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, this week so and then also thinking all the programs we do in Setara with the children but I was also reminded you know God reminded me you know that he's with us so that's a message I want to tell you children today that uh, God is with us and uh, he's always there he'll never leave uh, nor forsake us you know there's some times where we feel really down and then you feel like uh, no one is understanding you uh, or you want to be understood. Uh, but I want to tell you today that l l last week we talked about the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us in those situations. You know, and also, they've uh, 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 got a scripture here that, that I want to read for us. You know, and going through all that sadness, you know, I, I was going through being at the church, you know, imagining all the, the programs we do at the church now that we're not able to do. And then, but it was amazing that out of my sadness, uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me this scripture, which I want to read it for you today. It says, uh, Philippians 4, verse 4 to 7, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. So that I felt that amazing peace. And then which I want to share the scripture with you today, that uh, in whatever circumstances you might find yourself in, you must remember that God's peace is with you and that we can also rejoice in those times. I know it, it doesn't sound right, how can I rejoice while I'm feeling sad? But I promise you, uh, as the Holy Spirit works in you through the Word of God, you, in, you, inside you, you start feeling that joy. And then, of course, and then it shows uh, to your face. So I would like to pray for us in this morning. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Lord, we praise you for who you are in our lives. Father, we praise you that uh, you've promised us in your Word, Lord, that... Um, that you'll never leave nor forsake us, that you're with us, and that you love us. In all circumstances, Father, you are there with us. And Father, how amazing that, Lord, uh, we can talk to you ourselves, Lord, that we can communicate with you always, anywhere, Lord, and that you are God, that uh, you'll never forget us. Father, we are in the palm of your hands. Father, we praise you this morning for you who are in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, uh, my dear children. I love you all. Thank you. Over to you, David. Amen. Thank you so much, Sivian. Thank you uh, also to Mark. Can I just take a moment to really thank Mark, uh, who uh, pre-records all his um, uh, songs that he leads us in on a Sunday morning. And so that's quite an effort for you on a Saturday night, Mark. And we noticed that, uh, as is your way, there's more than one um, more, more than one instrument being played and you've put it all together. We so appreciate you. Thank you so much. You are the Zoom worship man and we, we do really appreciate you. Uh, it's great to have you all with us today and uh, as is the way it is with um, 
lockdown church services, uh, we have to try something new each time. We are experimenting all the time. And so today we're going to experiment with a church QGM after the service. And I hope you'll stay along uh, for that. Uh, it's going to be an informal one and an unofficial one. Informal in that we're not going to uh, you know, formally constitute the meeting and uh, everybody will ha be more than welcome to stay on. Uh, we're just gonna do three things. We're gonna uh, give a little report from me, which you would have already received. Uh, uh, we're going to, Neville's going to tell us a little bit about the finances during the church time, and then we're going to open it up for questions. And if you would like to ask us something, then you'll be able to do that. So please stay along for that. Um, we hope it won't be uh, too long, um, and we hope that you'll feel free to ask your questions and, and or make your comments. Um, but that's what we're going to do at the end of the service. Uh, I don't think we'll count it as an official uh, QGM because it's impossible to work out quorums and things like that. But I also don't think we'll have things to vote on, so it should be fine. Then secondly, just to say that Tuesday night has become Zoom prayer meeting night at Hilton Baptist. And we hope that you will join us this coming Tuesday again for our prayer meeting. It's going to be at seven o'clock. I'll send out the message uh, about 10 to seven just before. And Reg Brookman will be leading us uh, this week. And uh, it'll be just for an hour, and we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Please, please do. And then last but not least, uh, as you'll find out a little bit later, uh, God has been amazingly uh, faithful and gracious to us as Hilton Baptist from a financial perspective. And that's due to your faithfulness and support. And we want to thank you for that. And just to say that um, now, of course, you can't give uh, into the offering bag, but the EFT banking information is available. And if you don't know it and would like to get it, please contact me and I'll be happy to give it to you. So thank you for doing that. Okay, so those are all the notices. And uh, with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Manus and Haley. They're going to lead, lead us in a prayer. And then straight after that, to Kent and Robin. Uh, Robin will be reading the passage and Kent will be preaching. And we're so thrilled, uh, Kent, to have you in the pulpit, uh, so to speak, today. Uh, as first time we've had someone, uh, or had you preaching uh, during this lockdown time. Otherwise, it's just been Thomas and myself, but we're really looking forward to you. So, Manus, over to you. Thanks, David. Right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a new day filled with autumn colors and your beautiful creation. Thank you that even though there are varying distances between us, we can still come together as children of your kingdom. Please make your presence known to those in our congregation who are unable to join our virtual service and who may be feeling alone and disconnected at this time. We thank you for all our HPC prayer warriors involved in our prayer network who tenaciously pray for those of us who are in need or unwell. This morning, we lift these members to you and ask that you lay your, heavenly, your healing hands upon them. Please, would you ready our hearts for the QGM later so that we can continue to pursue your plans for HBC. Lord, thank you that we have entered into level three of the nationwide lockdown and that many people across the country are now able to continue working or for many people to pursue new job opportunities. We pray that you will be with those who have been negatively economically affected and that they would look to you for hope and comfort. As schools across the country begin opening up to pupils, we pray for the health and safety of our children and teachers and that pupils, parents and teachers would trust in you for their protection and daily well-being. Father, Please would you be with all those grieving or suffering as a result of racial inequality in South Africa and around the world. We pray specifically for all those who are protesting. Please would you keep them safe. Your word tells us that we should love our neighbors. We pray that our world leaders will deal with these inequalities assertively and that there will be a decisive and peaceful conclusion. Thank you for the opportunity to hear from Kent this morning. 
We pray that you would soften our hearts to the message that you have given him. God bless Africa. Guard her children. Guard her leaders. And give her peace. Amen. Thanks, Robin. Wonders. The reading today is taken from Psalm 67, and I'll begin at verse 1 until the end. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Do the hand over quickly. <laughs> So um, just so good to be able to um, share a word with all of you this morning and um, to have the, the opportunity to, to preach. And uh, David actually said to me a while ago, would you like to preach? And uh, I said, David, we, we are uh, in a bit of a crazy season as a family, so let me see. And uh, well, he was persistent and said, please, please share in, in June. So thanks, David, for uh, getting me uh, out of the lockdown <laughs> and into, into a, a preaching chance. Um, and just to say, yeah, oh, how I don't know about you guys, but have so enjoyed just having this this online church uh, with the Zoom rather than just a, a YouTube message. And I think one of the things that perhaps is enjoyable, but sometimes we struggle with too, is just how messy it can be and um, changeovers and kids' noises and all of that. But at the same time, that's just the life of the church is is, is in the messiness. It's in the the relationships and the connecting and so. Yeah, certainly from our side as a family, thank you to the leadership and to all of you just for, for yeah, creating that same sort of family space as, as we gather this morning. Um, but certainly in the world at the moment, there is not a good mess. Um, we know and have heard over many, many weeks now with the, the coronavirus, just what a mess the world actually is in. And not only that, but of course, over the last couple of weeks, just how racial tension and racial injustice has just boiled to the surface and the anguish and the pain and the abuse of, of all of that might be over in America, but it is just bringing up and surfacing just this great need in our world for justice across different racial groups and an end to the, to the abuse and in many ways um, in, in our world. And so, I mean, who of us could picture a world like this even a couple of months back? Just a world that has been shaped by coronavirus. We still don't even know what normal is going to be afterwards. Um, and a world at the moment that is just, again, rocked by, by um, this real heartfelt pain by many non-white people in the world. And so we are in a moment where, where it is. We're in a mess. Our world is in a mess. And I'm really grateful to, to HBC's leadership, to Davis and Thomas in particular, and the elders, and just kind of guiding us through that process of, of lament. And surely it's going to continue. And, and lament being that uh, amazing gift that's given to us as Christians to process our hurt and our pain before the Lord. And, you know, in one sense, lament's not necessary if you don't believe in God. We believe God is good. We believe he is profoundly gracious to us. And yet when we look at the world, we see many situations where we wonder, how, how can the goodness and the grace of God that we worship, how does it line up with, with, with just the pain that our world is feeling? And so lament is uniquely something for the people of faith, uniquely a gift for us to process our pain and to bring it before the Lord. And to be able to draw closer to God through our pain, through our tears, through our repentance. It's a wonderful gift. But I'm so grateful this morning as well that, that, that we as believers, as Christians, we have other gifts. We have other things in the toolbox, so to speak, in our relationship with God to deal with times like this. And it's going to sound strange to you this morning, but I think one, one of the things we have is we have this teaching about the blessing of God the blessing of God. We have laments on the one hand, 
and, and, and we, we are called to lament at different times, but we're also called very profoundly to remember the blessing that God brings into our lives. And so both lament and blessing help us to remember who God is, which is what we really, really need more than anything else in times of crisis and seasons of difficulty. We need to remember again who God is in our lives to get that perspective for the situations that we are facing. And so these are the gifts that God gives to us, lament and blessing. And I wonder for us, particularly as I guess a traditional denomination as, as, as Baptists, and some of you may be part of the church and not necessarily see yourself in the Baptist identity, but um, certainly that, that is who we are. We are Baptists. And I wonder, with a lot of the traditional denominations, we actually have a certain kind of fearfulness about talking about the blessing of God. And I find it quite sad because I think the word has been captured. It's been taken captive by the prosperity gospel, by what is not even a gospel at all. I actually hate that term, the prosperity gospel, because it's no gospel at all. Like Paul says in Galatians of the other gospel being preached, there's only one true gospel, but the prosperity gospel as this message that why Christ came is for your health, your wealth, and your finances, you know, to make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. And, and it recruits the God of all creation to be a kind of plaything for us, to bless us, and to have his agenda actually become our agenda. That what's important in the world is that we are blessed, and that, that we are healthy, and that we are wealthy. And it is, it's a distortion of the gospel. It's no gospel at all. And we're right to be cautious of the prosperity gospel in our teaching and in our living as Christians. And yet I think there's another danger. And certainly in, in, in home group and youth and other places, people would have heard me talk before about the severity gospel, that we, we can have an equal problem. We can be so afraid to talk of the blessing of God that, that, that we can't even mention an outward blessing in being a Christian being provided for by our father in heaven and one of the things we're going to see this morning and we see again and again in scripture is that god loves to bless that the christian life is not to be uh, this morose sad joyless kind of existence that that is a that is a severity gospel message which again is no gospel at all as Christ said, for I've come to give you life and life in abundance, that there is great joy in following Christ. There is blessing in the true gospel, blessing for us, blessing for our families, blessing for our nation, blessing for the world. And some of what we're going to look at today is going to describe for us just what that blessing entails. And so Psalm 67 that Rob's read and uh, Thanks, love, wherever you are, <laughs> um, that Rob's read for us this morning. It begins in verse 1, and it's a call. Maybe you can even just keep your fingers in Psalm 67, even though it's been read. We're going to return to it a couple of times. It's, it's a call to corporate worship for Israel, Psalm 67. Sometimes we picture the Psalms only as sort of uh, individual meditations, but Psalm 67 very much is is a worship song of ancient Israel. And you'll see verse one is a call to Israel. And remember who Israel are. They're the people who've been enslaved in Egypt. They're the people who will face the Babylonian exile. They're the people who've had the Philistines raiding them and, and so many problems and trials and difficulties. And so one of their songs of worship is to come again and remember verse one, remember the blessing of God, God's people. Verse 1, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Isn't that just a beautiful thought this morning? I don't know if you can picture uh, the nation of Israel and so many of them gathering in the temple courts. And, and somehow we're not quite sure how all of this always works, but they would be led in a song of worship. And the opening line is, may God bless us. May God Bless us. We need his blessing this morning. And if you've got kind of ears to, to, to hear the scripture and to think about where this text actually comes from, it comes from Numbers 6. Numbers 6, verse 22 to 27. And 
I just want to read that for us quickly to, so you can see the context of this lesson. Number six, verse 22 to 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. I will bless them. And I think yeah, we really, really just see how, and when we think about this passage, how wonderful it is that God himself has initiated a blessing for his people. And it's, sometimes I think we get into, slip into the pattern of thinking the blessing of God comes only when we kind of are doing the right thing and saying the right things and going to the right places. And it's something we've got to seek after and strive after and strain after this blessing of God that somehow we've got to kind of get God and twist his arm to, to bless us and to bless our families. But the scripture here says, no, God initiates this blessing. God is the one who says, calls Moses aside and says, Moses, please, would you talk to your brother Aaron? Would you talk to the priests? Would you tell them about my blessing? And this is the way I want you to bless them in case they are wondering what the blessing of God is all about. And think about some of the things that are mentioned in that passage. They are incredibly beautiful. That God would put his name on us. That God would keep us that God would shine his face upon us. Other translations put that so beautifully, that God would smile upon us, that, that the creator of all things would look at us as his people and he would smile, he would approve, he would love us. And then think of that other line, that God would turn his face towards us. What an amazing thought, that the God who knows all things, has created all things, is perfect in love, that he would turn his attention towards his people. Isn't that an amazing thought this morning? That God would turn his attention towards us. It's crazy. You almost just think, Lord, how? But that's what God has promised to do. And then he closes in saying, and give you his peace. Give you his peace. And that is the shalom of God. And that word it isn't just have no conflict in your life. It's the wholeness. It's the blessing. It's the fullness of what God longs to give us in our lives. The peace of God. And so think about this this morning, church. God initiates this blessing originally back in Numbers. God again causes the psalmist to write a psalm of praise that would remind God's people of his blessing for them and would remind them of his desire to bless them and to prosper them and to to love them and so i think it is quite incredible this morning and quite good and and we need to do this as god's people to actually reflect on in hard times not only is it a season of lament but it's the season where we can seek for the blessing of god as well where we can come before god and actually receive not just remember that god is the god who blesses and I, and I, and i hope you know that in your heart of hearts throughout the scripture that's the message isn't it god loves to bless he loves to bless he loves to look after he loves to care for he loves to give us grace and fill us with what we need this is the god we serve and worship and i wonder this morning it was just something as i prepared i wonder this morning if that's you, that you actually just need not only to remember the blessing of God, but you need to receive the blessing of God afresh. And there's something about hard times, and I don't know if you're like me, it kind of knocks you around a bit. You, you know, your heart is torn. It's, it's, it's wrenched, whether it's your own circumstance or, or all this racial tension and stuff going on. It's just a difficult time. And sometimes we forget that God wants to bless us. And that we actually need to not just remember that, but receive that, receive that. And, you know, even in the prayer meeting this morning, there were some real needs that, that were just surfacing there and, and concerns for us as families and, and, and who we are in our marriages and as people. And, you know, and, and hard times, they do that. It knocks it out of us. And I just really believe that God wants to just bless us as his people afresh this morning. He wants to fill your life with grace. 
That's one of the things I've been saying to Robs. You know, I've I've at times just felt like, yeah, I've been daddy daycare a little bit lately, and it's been a wonderful blessing. It's been amazing. But man, I've lost my cool. I don't know how many times I have said things I shouldn't have said to my kids. I've been angry. You can check in with Daniel. He's still alright, but <laughs> you know, it's just it's just that rough. You know, and I'm standing here this morning saying, God, I, I need your grace. I need your grace in this season. It's not always easy for your people in hard times like this. And the promise here of Psalm 67 is God loves to bless his people. And, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not worthy of God's blessing. I, I, I've done way worse things this weekend than I, than I have time to share. I, I'm feeling so low. I'm feeling so bad. I'm feeling so overwhelmed. Why don't you think about the reason for your blessing? That Christ has paid the price for you. He's died for your sins so that you can be blessed abundantly by God. That you can know the grace of God in your life. Not according to your merit. Not according to you getting it all right. Not twisting God's arm again. No. Christ has paid the way for our blessing. And I think if you need a refreshing in this, go and read Ephesians 1. Which talks about all the spiritual blessings we've received in Christ. And it actually mentions there that you've been chosen in Christ before the creation of the world. God knew he would send Jesus so that you might receive this grace and this blessing. So I don't know where you are this morning, what your need is. But if, if, you, if you sense that in the Lord, I would encourage you today to take some time just to come back to the Lord. Come back and just receive his blessing. Don't try not to stress about all the problems and all the issues of the world. We, we know there's some big issues out there, big issues for our families. Even. But maybe you need to just take that time to receive again the grace, the blessing, the smile of God over your life. It is our inheritance as God's people. And so I want to say to you, Hilton Davis, I want to say, may the Lord bless you this morning. May you sense his grace and favor upon your life. Due to what Christ has done for you, sense his love, his pleasure, his desire to walk with you and to protect you, to keep you, and to give you his peace, to give you his full, rich, abundant life. Man, it, this is a beautiful, beautiful scripture to remember the blessing of God, especially when times are tough, especially when they're hard. It's not just lament. We have the blessing of God as well. And in one sense, I think, the, 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 you know, we could finish with that thought this morning, but the psalm doesn't finish there. The psalm begins there. Israel, people of God, church today, you sitting at home, remember the blessing of God. Remember his grace to you this morning. Receive it. It's yours. He wants to help you and to bless you through this difficult season. But have a look with me at Psalm 67, verse 2. Because this is actually quite, I think, a logical psalm almost. He says, you know, may God be gracious to us. May God bless us. May he make his face or his smile to shine upon us. Verse 2. So that, so that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. So on one hand, as I was saying earlier, and you can go and read Ephesians for this, Ephesians 1. God blesses us simply because that's the kind of God he is. Simply because he sent Christ to enable us to receive his blessing and to walk in love and grace with him. That's got nothing to do with me or you. That's got everything to do with the nature of God. And that is a gift given to us. But there's an aspect of the psalm this morning that says the blessing God gives to us, God does expect a return on it. He gives it to us because he's loving and that's just because he wants to, to bless us. But also he wants that blessing to do something practical. He wants his people to be blessed in this world so that the nations might hear of him. So that salvation might, his salvation might be known among all nations. And it's as if the psalmist is saying to us this morning that there is a one-to-one -one correlation between how you receive the blessing of God in your life and your desire for other people to know that blessing as well. That when we receive and know the blessing of God, something happens in the heart of the believer that we get a desire for the nations to know who Christ is 
We get a desire for our families, for our friends, for our children to know the blessing of God. And this isn't so strange. Think about it in your life. The better the news, the more you want to shout it from the rooftops. The better the situation, the more you want other people to share in it. It's just natural. You know, I, I'm, I'm just still thinking baby mode here. But, you know, when, when Sophie was born, you know, even though it's the third kid, you're just like, I want the world to know. We've been blessed. This is an awesome thing. This is amazing. Rob's is healthy and happy. And Sophie's been born. I want the world to know about that. Think about your wedding day, the joy of just saying, this, this, is, this is my wife. This is my husband. You wanted the world to know about that. Uh, perhaps for, for, for some of our matrics, you know, the joy you're going to feel when you get your final results and, they go, and they're going to be blessed and good and, and great. <laughs> when you get news at the university that you wanted to go, get into, gets back to you and says, you can come. Um, think about the day when Christ saved you or the process in your life of coming to salvation. You wanted the world to know that blessing. And so when the better the news, the more we want others to know it. And it's the same thing here with the psalmist saying, we have such good news, the blessing and favor, God turning his face towards us. That changes us, that blessing. And it gives us this desire that others would know this good news too. That others would hear this good news. That they would be part of this blessing as well. And so the psalmist in verse 3 and 5, which you will notice, are actually identical. Um, and um, this, this psalm is actually a, a, a chiasm, which we won't go into now. But, but it, verse 1 and 2 match verse 6 and 7. Verse 3 and 5 match one another, and verse 4 has a thought for us in the middle. But I wanted to focus on verse 3 and 5, which are identical lines. And this is the heart of somebody who was blessed by God. This is their prayer. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And I love that line because I try to picture it in the context of Israel. And, and, and who are the people that praise God? <laughs> Israel is the people who praise God. The people gathered in the temple. We are the people who praise God. But there's something about when you know the blessing and goodness of God in your life. Look at the next line. It says, may all the peoples praise you. And the sense you get in the Hebrew is that this is, this is the, the Gentiles. This is the nations that do not yet know God. And again, the nations that did not know God around Israel, this was not a happy history for Israel. They'd been enslaved by Egypt. The Babylonians were going to take them into exile. Assyria destroyed the northern kingdom. They had a lot of anger towards the nations around them. There was a lot of a human response of, you know what, God, bless us and judge them. But the psalmist says that there's something about when you know the grace and favor of God, even in hard times, your heart is changed and your prayer becomes, may the peoples, may the nations, may those who don't know you, God, we're longing that they would come to join this party. We're longing that they would praise you as well. We're longing that all the peoples would be able to praise you, God. And so it's this inclusive, open-armed kind of faith. And I don't think, of course, nothing has changed for the church. It's even more so today when we gather and worship. I trust, I pray that there is always a sense of you that just says, this is too good to be true to myself. When we hear the word preached, I wish so-and-so could hear this. Uh, hopefully that's happening today. <laughs> But when we fellowship with one another, you know, wouldn't this be a wonderful thing for, for others in the world to have? And verse 4, I want to have just a look at verse 4. Because again, the psalm is actually quite a logical psalm again. Because the question remains, why can the peoples, all the peoples of the earth, praise God? What, how is God worthy of their praise? And how is it that the nations can be joyful? Verse 4, look at that. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. It's a beautiful picture. All the peoples, all the nations of the earth being able to see how worthy God is and praise him with joy. But why? Why can the nations do this? And, and I think this is such a pertinent question right now in the world. 
I mean, you look at news feeds from whatever country, and again, you'll see anger, and I think it's righteous anger many times. You will see pain, you will see hardship, you'll see difficulty. And you think the one thing you don't see among the nations is joy, joy. But the scripture says, yeah, may the nations be glad and sing for joy. And here it is again, the logic of the psalm. For you, verse 4, God, for you, God, rule the peoples with equity and you guide the nations of the earth. This is the reason the nations can be glad, because God rules. Isn't that amazing? We've shared that sometime in the prayer meeting and in other parts of discussions. What is the good news we bring to a world in crisis? That God rules, that God's kingdom is coming into the world. It's come in Jesus. And not only does God just rule, but look at this. Isn't this a word for our times? That God rules the peoples with equity, my translation says. He rules the people with fairness and justice. And when we look at the world today, we see the pain across the world where injustice has just been allowed to fester. And we don't want to get into all the challenges of that. I don't know for David and Thomas, maybe there's a whole thing we need to tackle there about just injustice and all sorts of the pain the world is feeling right now about racial tensions. And, and for once, you feel like it hasn't originated in South Africa. But we, we know we've got this great challenge. And here is one the reason the nations can be glad, not because we can solve this prejudice. And I don't know, because you've looked at the news and I've asked myself, just where does this stuff come from? Lord? I don't know how to uproot racism. I don't know how to deal with this prejudice. I don't know what to do with this. But here is the reason the nations have hope, not because we can resolve this problem on our own, but because God is a good king and he rules with equity, with fairness, with justice. Sometimes in the Psalms, it speaks about God's throne, the foundation of his throne as being justice and righteousness. And our world needs that. They need to know that there is a God, but he's not just a wishy-washy marshmallow God. He's a God of justice. He wants to guide and lead the nations in truth. And that second part, it says about God, that he guides the nations of the earth. And here I think we're supposed to see God is not just judge. Man, we need, we need him as judge, the right, good, fair, gracious judge. But he is the guide to the nations of the earth. And this is a tender term. This is like a shepherd. God shepherds the nations of the world. He shepherds us in our lives. What a beautiful picture of King Jesus. He comes to rule with justice and to guide in grace. It's a wonderful picture of our God. And the psalmist says, this is what makes the nations glad. This is what allows the world to sing for joy. That this, this is our God and he has come into the world in Christ to rescue us and to bring us his blessing. And then as we head for the close, Psalm six, uh, verse 67, sorry. We see the psalmist closes, I think, with a real challenge. And as I said, verse 6 and 7 match with verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 starts with, may the Lord bless us. And it ends by saying, God, our God, blesses us. So there's a sense that the prayer was, Lord, please bless us. By the end of the psalm, there is an acknowledgement for the people of God. We have been blessed. And I think this is really, really important because sometimes as Christians, and I include myself absolutely in this, I say, well, Lord, there's always another season before I get involved in taking your blessing to others. There's always something else that needs to happen first in my life. I, I, I would love for you to um, pay me a little bit more, Lord, or I'd, I'd love to feel a little bit more spiritually mature, or I'd love to have more companions and friends in this journey, or I'd love to overcome this problem. But the psalmist doesn't let us get away with this. He says, you are a blessed people. God has blessed you. And I know times are tough in your lives. This is not a message of rebuke. It's of great encouragement, I pray, that, that we have been blessed in the Lord. And just think, look at the faces on the screen right now. Think of your brothers and sisters in the Lord. You are blessed to know one another and to journey in Christ together. We're blessed that God has called us to faith this morning, that God has given us his word, that, that we had Mark leading us in worship. We are such a blessed people. And again, if you need to receive some of that blessing, you, you know, do that. I'm going to pray for you in, in, in a moment. 
But come to the place the psalmist says of acknowledging, I am blessed by God. And then verse 7, he says, may God bless us still. So Lord, we pray on into the future. Please continue to bless us. Continue to smile upon us. Continue to show us your favor, oh God. Why? So that all the ends of the earth will fear him. So Lord, bless us so that the nations can hear about you, so that our neighbors can hear about you, our family can know you, that they can have this joyful song of worship in their life. That God, you can get the praise that you deserve. So bless us, Lord, not for ourselves, but bless us for the nations. Bless us for others' sake. And um, I don't know where I came across this illustration, but it's always stuck with me that that if you think about the Dead Sea in, in Israel, I've never been to Israel, maybe one day it would be awesome to get there, but the Dead Sea has nothing living in it, or very, very little. I don't know what lives in the Dead Sea, pretty much nothing. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. And um, what happens with the Dead Sea is that there is a flow of water into the Dead Sea, but there is no flow of water out of the Dead Sea. And so what happens is as the water flows in, it evaporates and it leaves behind the salt and the minerals. And so the Dead Sea continually over time gets saltier and saltier. It gets deader and deader to life. Why? Because it has an inflow of water, but it has no outflow of water. And I wonder at times in our lives, this is a challenge to me as well, that Lord, when your blessing flows into my life, would you help me to always let it have an outlet? And think about what happens with water when it has life in it. I, mean, I can remember summer camp and just the, the desolation really all around in Kimberley. And you go next to the Vaal River and it's like a paradise. Green grass and beautiful willow trees and, 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 and water brings life. But when it flows into a place and it has no outflow, it's dead. It's like the Dead Sea. But God's blessing in our life, it should be like a stream that flows from us. And Jesus himself said that. He said that from within you, from within you, believer, streams of living water will flow. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Lord, not the Dead Sea in my heart and in my life, but living water for people around me, for my neighbors, my family, my community, and for the people at the ends of the earth. Oh, Lord, let the stream of living water get to them. May the nations praise you. May all the peoples praise you. Let's pray this morning together. Father, we want to thank you so much for your Father heart for us. Lord, I just have a sense this morning and picking up different conversations with people that there are many of us struggling this morning. God, we thank you for your blessing this morning. Thank you that we can stand, we can sit before you now. We can not only remember your blessing, we can receive your blessing. And so, Holy Spirit, would you please minister to your flock this morning? Lord? Would you minister to me? Would you minister to us? Lord? That we would receive your grace for the areas of our life that we need it. We would receive your, your forgiveness, Lord. We would receive your empowering. We would receive your strength. We would receive the sense that you are smiling over us because that is what your word says that you are doing. When you look at me, you see Christ. When you look at us, you see Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for your blessing this morning. And, saints, would you receive the blessing of God? Would you receive again the Holy Spirit? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Would you receive his presence near you, next to you, in you, over you, before you, his protection and his peace? Guard us, Lord, for your sake, we pray. And, Father, we don't want to end our prayer there. Lord, would you let your blessing transform us, Lord, because when you love us, God, something has to change in the human heart. We cannot just be about ourselves. And Lord, that's our tendency in times of crisis, to bunker down and focus inward, Lord. But we thank you that when you bless your people, on the other hand, there is the stirring that your gospel, that your good news would go out from us, Lord. And so help us, Lord. Help us to be those who would carry this living water into the world around us, into our workplaces, even as perhaps some of the tricks in grade sevens go back to school, Lord, in our families, and of course, in the spirit of this psalm, to the ends of the earth, that all nations might praise you, Lord. All peoples might hear of you and drink this living water that you give to us. We pray this in your wonderful name, Jesus, your precious name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Church. It's been good to share with you again. And back over to you, David. Great. Thank you so much. And I hope that you can hear me because I'm a little bit away from the computer. Um, but I wanted us to finish the service today around the communion table. Uh, it's our custom, it's our tradition, uh, the first Sunday of the month to uh, come around the Lord's table and to remember the ultimate blessing, is it not, that we get to remember what Jesus did for us. And one of the great things about the communion service is that we also get to remember uh, that he is present with us because he is present with us in the, uh, the bread and the cup as we eat and drink together. And then we also get to look forward to the fact that he said we will eat and drink uh, until he comes again. And so we have this ultimate hope. So I think faith, love, and hope are represented in this table, which are just beautiful blessings that we have as Christians. So I hope that you've remembered uh, and uh, have some bread and some grape juice with you uh, so that you can eat and drink with us. In one sense, this isn't a proper communion service. This isn't a proper celebration of the Lord's Supper because we are separate. We are not together. And the great thing about communion is that we come together to remember. But we can still remember. And we are still together if only by Zoom. And so would you come with me uh, and eat and drink together with me uh, and remember the Lord's death until he comes. I just want to take a moment to read this passage from 1 Corinthians, and I hope uh, that this would be your reflection as we come around the Lord's table. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father God, we thank you for this blessing, this blessing that we can do together this morning, even if we're not together. We thank you that, that this unites us more than anything else. We thank you that we are blessed because our sins have been forgiven. We thank you that we are blessed because you took the punishment we deserved. We thank you that we are blessed because you sent your Holy Spirit to be with us. We thank you that we are blessed because one day you will return and then we will be with you forever. And so this table reminds us of some of the concrete substance of our blessing, which we are then invited to pass on. And so thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's a whole five people here at Hilton Baptist, and I'm going to invite them uh, to come and receive the bread and the cup. And uh, would you uh, pass it around at home as well so that everybody can have a piece of bread and uh, some grape juice. And then just keep it if you can, and then we'll eat and drink together when everyone's received. Give you a moment to do that. Come. <laughs> <laughs> this bread represents the body of Christ that was broken for you Eat with grateful hearts, because you have been blessed. This cup represents the blood of Christ shed for you. 
the blood of Christ that brings about your forgiveness. Drink, because once again, you have been blessed. So Father, thank you that we can eat and drink with faith, knowing that this blessing is ours because of your love and compassion and incredible action on our behalf. Thank you for this blessing. Thank you that this blessing is always with us. Help us to live as blessed people and to share it with those who don't know it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody, that brings us to the end of the service. And I wonder if you wouldn't just like a minute or two just to catch your breath uh, before we uh, have our little church meeting. Don't run away. If you have to, we'll forgive you. Uh, but please do try and stay with us and, and we'll unmute you all for a few minutes and then we'll start in a couple of minutes with our meeting. Lock. Plenty. Brilliant. Houston. Richelder. Well,